Hi, this is Danielle, the domestic scientist. In today's video, I'm giving you an update on my mini makeover for my kitchen and my sunroom. I love both of these rooms, the natural light and the shape and layout of the kitchen, and I'm just in love with this space. However, I think it does need some updating, especially when it comes to the wall color. So I decided to go with Stonington Gray by Benjamin Moore. So after I show you kind of how the new paint color has turned out, I'm also going to do an unboxing of my new Vigo kitchen faucet. So let's get started. All right, so painting these rooms was supposed to be a really simple project. However, the more work we started putting in, the more work we realized needed to be done. So once the primer went up on the walls, we started to notice something weird about the ceiling that it wasn't quite white. I thought the ceiling was white before and with the green paint that was there before, the ceiling looked kind of white to me. So I didn't notice the true color of the ceiling. So as the primer went up, it brightened the whole space and we started to see that the ceiling is in fact like a light tan color and so it really started to kind of show. So here you can see that um, my husband started painting the ceiling white, so that added even more work to this project. And you can kind of see on the side, he left um, some yellow um, areas. And here um, on the right side, he's painted the white ceiling paint. And on the left side, you can see that tannish ceiling paint. Now the white paint that we use has a slightly blue undertone, so it might look a little blue on your screen. Now that being said, what I also noticed when I started painting the stone to gray around the house is I love the way it looks in the sunroom but in the kitchen it looks slightly purple and with the new white ceiling paint I still am not sure I'm gonna keep that color so this is what the sunroom looks like um, but I'm coming from my bar area so if you remember a couple videos back I painted um, the rest of my living room repose gray on this wall is repose gray lightened by 75% on this uh, wall right here this little spot is 125% repose gray and now as we're walking into to this room the color shifts a little bit cooler and i am using stonington gray by benjamin moore for the sunroom so I actually like the way the color looks in the sunroom. At some angles, it does look slightly purple. Um, but when I read about the paint, it was supposed to have like a slightly blue undertone. But to me, um, with all the sun that comes in this room, it does look slightly purple at different times of the day. Nevertheless, I do like the paint color. Um, and I think as I continue to put other decor in here, that purple um, undertone is going to be drowned out a little bit more um, as I continue to add more layers. So for this room, I'm happy with the way it has come out. Um, I'm just loving um, how the, the um, cherry wood chairs pop up against the background in the bay window. I did, however, notice that as I put the primer down and I started putting the paint down, I realized that the blinds that I have have started yellowing. And it really wasn't that obvious when the paint color was green. But now that I come over here, I'm seeing like a yellow buildup on the blinds. So um, I'm going to figure out how to correct that and I'll start doing some uh, of my experiments um, trying to figure out different approaches to cleaning that yellow um, that yellow buildup off the blinds I'm not quite sure if that's like a dirt type buildup um, that has accumulated over time or if it's kind of like you know how appliances or not appliances but electronics yellow over time I don't know if it's the same effect so I've been doing some research on YouTube about how to correct um, when when things that are white start yellowing over time and then I'll start doing some experiments on how to get rid of that yellow cast and I will take you guys of course along for that journey it is gonna be a big undertaking so definitely not something I'm gonna spend too much time focusing on now but as you can see on this wall the Stonington gray looks Looks beautiful now with the Stonington gray I did ask them to lighten it up by 25% because I want my sunroom to be nice and beautiful and airy and I really want to keep that soft uh, light bright feel to the sunroom all right, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about in my kitchen is replacing the kitchen faucet. Now I had mentioned earlier that I wanted to get a new faucet for the kitchen and I wanted to do it as a part of this makeover project. The problem is that typically you do not replace the kitchen faucet until you're replacing the sink and the countertops. It makes the most sense to do it at that time. However, I'm having technical problems with my kitchen faucet, which is why I need to replace it now. And then um, I will use the same faucet when I redo the kitchen. So what I'm showing you here is just how weak the cold water stream is and comparison to the hot water stream and 
so I don't get enough water pressure coming from my sink. I really don't like it. And what winds up happening is the hot water in my house is really hot. And then when you turn the cold water on through the kitchen sink, the stream is very weak and you can't get enough cold water. And when you try to mix it, it doesn't really mix. So you don't get lukewarm water. You either get the cold water or you get the scorching hot water and it is so easy to burn yourself. So funny story about this faucet. This is not the faucet that came with the house. The faucet that was already here was a Kohler faucet and we have been using it I didn't care for it and I said well I know I'm gonna redo the kitchen so when I redo the kitchen I'll get a new faucet that was my plan so I wasn't stressing over it but one day um, my husband was out at Home Depot and I happened to be in the kitchen cooking and um, cleaning and everything and so uh, the water just went out and all of a sudden I was hearing this whooshing sound up under the sink and I'm like oh my god I had to turn off the water there's all this water coming out from under the sink and getting all over the floor so I had to call my husband tell him what happened and he um, immediately went back into the store and got got this faucet to replace as a stopgap measure. So that happened and then when we started using the faucet, um, there was a water pressure issue and so we tried to fix it and so uh, that didn't work out. So now we're just having to replace the faucet. Now a while back I showed you guys on one of my virtual shoppings um, and I'll put a link to that in the description box below that I wanted to go with a Vico faucet. I had had it in my first house and I really loved it. So I went ahead and ordered my Vico faucet and now I'm gonna give you guys a quick unboxing so you can kind of see what components came with it and then um, hopefully next week or the week after I'll be able to show you guys the complete install. All right, so I'm excited to show you guys the Vigo components that I got for my faucet. Now I bought the faucet, but I also bought two other accessories that I wanna show you as well. The first is this cover plate. Um, so the faucet I have has a one hole installation and I do have other holes in, um, already drilled on my existing granite. So I just bought this matching Vigo plate. Now I, I know you can get a generic cover, um, but I thought it would be good to get one with the same brand so that the material and the finish would really be the exact same and you don't have to worry about one color of stainless steel being different than another so I'm super excited about it and it was well packaged so there's no scratching on this item as well the next thing I want to show you guys is the um, soap dispenser now I had this in my first house as well and I absolutely love the soap dispenser it comes in two parts and of course this is the inner box on um, this label Vigo but there was a shipping box as well I'm gonna take out the canister it's a sleek um, chrome style canister which is really nice this is a part that's going to be up under the sink so nobody's going to see it but even if you have a plumber it's going to look nice and then it has the top part now the first part here kind of screws on so this is the part um, where those ridges are that's the part that's going to go on your granite and at the bottom the reservoir is going to attach and then you can actually use the top to put in all your detergent and then you go ahead and you slide in um, the pump at the very top and that's how you actually get the soap out from the top of the display so I absolutely love this soap dispenser it's a really nice good high quality and I love the finish on it the pump is very smooth um, sometimes when you get those pumps they can be kind of stiff and tough over time but this one uh, has such a smooth finish and I just think that they make a nice high quality product um, it doesn't feel cheap when you're using it and pressing it so I'm really excited about that I know it looks kind of weird just sitting on the counter but of course once it's installed it's going to be absolutely beautiful the next thing I want to show you is the actual faucet itself. Again, the Vigo box was put inside of another box, so it was packaged extremely well, and I was very impressed with the way that they packaged it to protect it. Also, um, everything in the box actually had one of these like dust covers on it, but I did take it out before I started filming. So now I'm just going to show you guys what the actual faucet itself looks like in the box, and it has several pieces. I'm going to show you the major pieces that are kind of visible um, because the other pieces I'm not quite sure where they even go um, and there are a lot of pieces in this box so I'm gonna lay everything out on the counter and I'll be right back 
All right, so now I've got all the major components out on the counter and I'm going to show you guys a little bit about how they go. Now, I'm gonna tell you up front, this is a big faucet. So the first part is the base and um, I'm just gonna show you guys about how tall this is. Um, it's coming up to like my neck right now and I'm gonna try to shift over out of the way a little bit, but I really like this faucet. So I'm gonna lower it a little bit and hold it um, right here so you can get an idea of what it would look like actually installed and the height so it's gonna come just the bottom part is gonna come to the top of my chest and then there is the um, springs part of it now this spring is wow I mean it's kind of large and tall and that's kind of where the hose itself is gonna go and so this part is gonna be really tall I mean it is about as tall as I am um, once you take into account the um, counter height so this is a big faucet you guys like definitely not what I would have just picked um, but it's more of a commercial style pre rinse faucet so if you want like a powerful sprayer and you want like a real commercial kitchen experience experience I think this is a great faucet I like the pot filler okay it's kind of hard to hold this up I like the pot filler and I think it's a really nice touch to have and then also it has um a second arm on it that will allow you okay I'm having a hard time holding this up it's heavy <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie, it's kind of heavy and it's so tall so now I'm just gonna take it apart and put it on the cabinet so again um you can actually detach both of these pieces. Both of the arms can move independent of each other and that's really cool. So now I'm gonna show you the spring piece. Now this is a really heavy um, spring piece. So for, when it comes to the actual faucet itself, I think it's a really great quality. And again, I had no issues with mine. Um, I'm gonna get in a little bit closer in a few moments just to let you guys kind of see what it looks like up close. But I mean, I just love the handle and it's a very smooth, um, transition and the last thing I want to show you guys is the sprayer now this sprayer is big as you can see I'm holding it in my hand and I mean it has some good weight to it it's going to allow a lot of pressure because I think it kind of aerates the water to increase the pressure and so you just squeeze it um, to get a rain flow type of um, I guess a dispersal of water and so I'm really excited about having this faucet back and I cannot wait until it's installed so I can show it to you guys and so here's what it kind of looks like in the box so you can get kind of a close-up shot of all the components and of course once it's installed I'm gonna give a full-scale review um, and hopefully I won't have any further problems with the water pressure so I am so excited uh, about this faucet install I, I just can hardly wait so that is it for today's video I do have a collaboration coming up next week so I had to get the sunroom done because I'm gonna shoot in there for next week's video and then after that I'll be back to show you a little bit more about what's going on in my kitchen and y'all I have to tell you um, two things broke down since the last kitchen update so I really have to figure out what I'm gonna do about this kitchen and I need to figure something out really fast so I will see you guys next week thanks for watching be sure to like comment and subscribe